Welcome to BCP. BCP is actually the bulk copy program. It's an old command line application that's been included in SQL Server pretty much since SQL Server was first created in SQL Server 4.2. Sybase also includes a version of this command, which is where the original name came from. What this command line application does is it allows for data import and export into and out of the SQL Server. Now, it's a very versatile application. You can specify that you want to simply dump data out of a table. You can run a query and export that information to a file. And you can actually do ETL on the fly as data is loading in and out of the system. And this is actually done through format files. Now, I'm not going to go into format files because that's a fairly advanced configuration of BCP, well beyond what you'll need to know really for the certification exams. What you will need to know is a variety of switches that are available for the BCP application. Now, this is only a sampling of the switches that are available to you. There are a lot more of them that you can use. The first three I've got listed here, dash N, dash C, and dash W, specify the data type that we're going to use as the data is going to be written to the export file. If we use dash N, that means we're going to use native type, which is going to be a binary mode. Dash C and dash W are both going to be character types, with dash C being non Unicode and dash W being Unicode. Dash T specifies the field terminator that we're going to use. Dash R specifies the row terminator. By default, dash T is going to use a tab, and dash R is going to use a carriage return and a line feed. Dash I specifies an input file for the command, while dash O specifies an output file. Dash capital S specifies the server name. Dash capital U specifies the username. Dash capital P specifies the password. Dash capital T specifies whether or not we're going to use a trusted connection. If you're not specifying dash T, you have to specify dash U and dash P, and vice versa. If you're not specifying dash U and dash P, you have to specify dash capital T. Dash D specifies the database name that we want to use. Dash capital E specifies that we're going to keep identity values when inserting data back into the SQL Server. Dash capital K was introduced with SQL Server 2012, and that specifies that we're going to use the application intent equals read only flag. And you would need to actually specify that as dash K space read only. Dash B specifies the batch size. This is very important for minimizing transaction log bloat when inserting data as well as minimizing locking on the table. When BCP runs, it runs within the context of one transaction per batch. By default, all inserts that BCP does are going to be done as a single batch, which means all inserts will be done as part of a single transaction. So if you've got 10 million rows that need to be inserted, that's one 10 million row transaction. That means for the duration of the insert operation to complete, you're going to be running as a single transaction. So nobody else is going to be able to write data into that table while that transaction is running. So if we specify a batch size, typically people use something between 1,000 and 10,000. Then the locking will be minimized because we're only going to be inserting 1,000 or 10,000 rows, depending on what batch size you specify, and then committing and then beginning a new transaction. This keeps the locking to a minimum, and it also keeps the transaction log from growing too large because we are doing 1,000 rows and then committing, that means that when checkpoint comes by, SQL Server can then remove those records from the transaction log once the next transaction log backup has occurred. Or if you're using simple recovery mode, as soon as the checkpoint occurs, those log records can then be removed from the transaction log. That's really all there is to BCP. Let's go ahead and take a look at how we actually use BCP with a couple of quick demonstrations. So in this first window here, you can see I've got the BCP command specified and I'm specifying a table that I want to export. So I've got the name of the table using the full three-part name. The reason I'm using the full three-part name is because I'm not specifying the dash lowercase d parameter. If I was, I wouldn't need to specify the full three-part name. I would only need the two-part name. After the object name, I've got the word out. This tells BCP that I'm exporting the data to a text file. I'm then specifying the name of the file that I want to use. Because I'm not specifying the path to the file, the file is going to be created in whatever folder I'm currently in. As you can see from the command prompt, I'm currently in C users Denny desktop. I specify dash s to connect to the local host, 
dash capital T to specify that I'm using Windows authentication, dash B to specify the batch size of 1000, and dash C for character type data. Now, if you haven't noticed, I've been saying capital and lowercase next to these parameter letters. That's because all the parameters for BCP are case sensitive. You'll see if you do a BCP slash question mark, a lot of the letters are reused. So you need to make sure that you're using the correct case of the parameter. So let's go ahead and run this command, and we'll see that all the data gets exported out to the file named sales order detail. We can also run queries through BCP, which you can see in the other window that I've got open here. In this case, I'm exporting the exact same information, but in the second window, I'm doing it with a select statement to show the differences. I still run the BCP command, and then in parentheses, I put the actual select statement that I want to run. I could put a stored procedure name here as well if I wanted to. I simply do select star from, and then the table name. The select statement that you put here can be as complex or as simple as is necessary. I then specify query out instead of out, and then the name of the file I want to export to, in this case, query.txt. The rest of the parameters I'm using are exactly the same. Dash capital S for the server name, connecting to localhost. Dash capital T to specify Windows authentication. Dash B with 1000 to specify a batch size of 1000. And dash C. Now, a batch size isn't necessarily needed when exporting, where it is much more important when importing. I simply use it every single time as a best practice so that I always know that I'm using it so I don't have to worry about ins or outs. I'll typically use the same batch file or the same command for both ins and outs, simply changing query out or out to in. So if I've already got the dash B1000 in there, I don't need to worry about doing a massive import by accident. If I run this command, I get the exact same output. 121,317 rows copied, standard network packet size of 4K, and the amount of time that it took to do the export. So if I open the file, I can see the sales order detail data all sitting in this text file. There's no headers, there's no column information, just the data that has been exported. I can then hand this data off to a partner and they could import it fairly easily into whatever their application is. Let me go ahead and turn off WordWrap to make it a little easier to read the file. As you can see, once we've got the data formatted a little better, you can see quite easily that it's simply a tab delineated file. If we needed to import this data into a new SQL server without using BCP, we would simply run it through SSIS, tell it was tab delineated, and we'd be off and running. Or we could simply import it using BCP again, and BCP would read the format because it's in the exact same format that BCP generates by default. In summary, BCP is a simple command line application, but it's an incredibly powerful command line application because it allows us to do so much from the command line and import and export such a massive amount of data, including using advanced transformations through the format files. It allows for a wide variety of options depending on the parameters used, including importing, exporting, exporting from a query, as well as doing all those crazy transformations that sometimes need to be done to remove columns or add columns or resize columns as part of the insert or export operations.